Hey guys, welcome back to HD Arachnids. I'm Dave. Helen's not here today, but as always, she sends her love. Today I'm going to do a video about uh, kind of basic rehousing tips and a 101 type rehousing type video, basically. I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys how we do some of our rehousings and different methods. I'm going to explain what we keep in our rehousing kit and uh, just kind of go over some points that you want to think about or concern yourselves before you get started on with the rehouse. Uh, I'd like to thank all the new subscribers. We're up to 250 now. Once we get up to 500, we're probably going to do another giveaway. We'll do something a little little cooler than a sticker this time. Uh, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do, but, you know, we'll get something up there and uh, do another little giveaway. We appreciate all the support, and we just kind of want to, you know, show our thanks and do a little something for our subscribers. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please feel free to hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and then if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, I encourage you guys to leave them below, you know, if you're wondering about, you know, something specific, how I did something in the video, you know, ask a question in the comments below. I will absolutely answer all comments. Um, if you think I missed anything, left anything out, or if you want to give us any of your tips, you know, something that might be helpful that I didn't go over, like I said, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. We really enjoy hearing from you guys. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into the video here. Like I said, the first part of the video is just going to be going over our rehousing kit, uh, what I have in there. Um, how I got it set up and uh, why I have everything in there. And then I'm going to go through some points, you know, just different things that you want to make sure you concern yourselves with or think about before you get started on the rehouse. And then I'm going to show you guys some different methods for the actual rehousing of the tarantula and discuss a few methods that I'm, I'm not going to show you, but we're still going to go over them. So we're going to go ahead and get into the video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you guys enjoy this. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is our rehousing kit, I guess you would call it. This is just uh, all the stuff that we use for our rehousing. I usually keep it in this big tote that we use as a uh, catch tub, um, just off to the side, stored off somewhere and with all everything together, just so it's all handy and ready to go. I don't have to go searching for things when I want to do a rehousing. I can just grab this and everything I need is going to be right here. So we're going to go through what I keep in here and what we use it for and why we have it and all that stuff. So we'll start out over here, flashlight. Super important, really handy, you know. You can't see the spider, the lighting's not real good or whatever. Use your flashlight, helps you out. Spoon, you need a spoon for a little bit of digging or whatever, especially with them fossorial species. A lot of the times you'll have to do a little bit of digging to get them out of their burrows and, you know, obviously it comes in handy. And I always use the same spoon. I don't just, you know, I'm not gonna use a spoon for digging a tarantula and then go put it back in the silverware drawer. I don't, don't think Helen would approve of that. And then, of course, paint brushes. I just keep a variety of sizes on hand all the time. Um, just They come in real handy, you know, using them for moving the tarantula and whatnot and moving the substrate out of the way gently when you get down towards the tarantula so that you don't end up, you know, hurting it with a spoon or something like that. Uh, various sizes of tongs. Like right here, I've got three different choices, a couple different metal ones and then a, a bamboo one that's easier on, like, you know, crickets and stuff like that. When you grab them, it won't kill them. And then in the bin itself, we've got uh, two different size catch bottles. And these things, they're real simple to make. You just take a bottle. I've got a round one and a square one because some of the enclosures are round and some of the enclosures are square. And you kind of want to, you know, if you've got a corner, you want something that kind of has a corner on it so it'll match up. Um, they're super simple to make. You just cut the bottom off, pop a few holes in there. You can put a hole in the top if you like, if it's got a real big top. And the same thing with these ones. I just cut the bottom off and then poked a few holes in there and then uh, I just took a lighter to it so that it kind of melted off the edges and smoothed them out so I don't have any rough edges on these. And then for those, we use cardboard underneath and uh, the way I set this up is you have one solid piece of cardboard and the one with a hole in it. You get the solid piece underneath the tarantula just like this and it's contained and then you get the piece with the hole underneath it pull out the solid piece and then the tarantula can go down through the hole and into the new enclosure, in theory, if everything works out the way it's supposed to. And then of course we've got catch cups of various sizes with lids because you can never have too many catch cups. Big one for the bigger tarantulas, small ones for the smaller tarantulas. Another handy thing, especially when you're working with like the new world species with the irritating hairs and stuff like that, if you have real sensitive skin, is gloves. You can buy a box of gloves for like 10 bucks at Menards. I'd recommend always having them on hand. And then I just have a couple of different size bins that I use. You want to do, you know, most of your rehousings in, in a bin like this just so that it's an extra layer of protection, something else that the tarantula has to run out of to 
get away from you. And then I saw this on, you know, Tom's Big Spiders. He always put uh, paper towel on the bin so that if the spider does run around, it's going to run, you know, hopefully under that and just go for cover. And I've seen it work multiple times, so, you know, it's a great idea. I make sure I use it when I'm doing all my rehouses now just because it's, again, another added layer of protection to, you know, keep the tarantula from getting away. Uh, I guess that's about everything that I normally keep in my rehouse kit. Um, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, uh, just feel free to leave me a question down in the comment. And then uh, we're going to move on to the next portion of the video now. So for this part of the video, we're going to do um, kind of a basic tarantula rehousing 101. I'm going to go through all the things that... Uh, that I feel like you should, you know, kind of think about and consider before you're getting ready to rehouse your tarantula to make things just move along as safely and quickly and efficiently as possible. Um, this may not obviously be the way everybody does it, but this is kind of what we do and the general checklist that I kind of go through in my head, you know, before I get set to rehouse a tarantula just to make sure that everything, like I said, will go as smoothly as possible because that's what we want. We want everything to be safe, smooth, and efficient, you know what I mean? So the first thing that I want to talk about is location now this you know a lot of people don't really think about this they'll just plunk down in the in the middle of the living room or you know wherever they have handy to do it but you kind of want to think about that a little bit ahead of time because if you're in a you know a real cluttered room like say there's a ton of boxes off to the side or something like that or a bunch of storage or you know a living room with a lot of big heavy furniture and thick carpet and drapes and all that stuff if that tarantula makes a run for it you know it's going to be a lot harder to retrieve that tarantula than if you're in a, an area that's got kind of an open floor plan or maybe a linoleum floor like you know something like the middle of your kitchen or you know if you have a, a dedicated invert room like I do you know just like I do most of my stuff right here on this desk right here it's pretty open all the way around there's not a lot of stuff that the tarantula can get underneath and it's you know one thing that you really want to consider and another thing that you would really want to consider is lighting lighting's really important if you're working in a real dimly lit space, a brown spiderling against brown substrate, it's not going to be real easy to see. You're going to have a hard time with it. And, you know, good lighting just generally makes everything, you know, easier to do. Now, this can be anything from a bright overhead light to, you know, like I've got a real nice ring light that I use for filming. I try to use that actually most for most of my tarantula stuff. I'll use the ring light. And if you don't have that, even just a, a desk lamp or, you know, a flashlight at the very least will... Be helpful and it'll make things a little bit easier for you. The next thing I want to talk about is using a safety tub. Now, like you saw earlier in my rehousing kit, I've got, you know, a couple different size safety tubs there. The big one, um, you can find those at most container store type places or Target or Walmart or whatever. All it is is uh, it's just a blanket boxes designed for holding blankets and you know being put underneath the bed i like it because it's nice and wide it's low profile it's it's about six eight inches tall and you can fit most size enclosures then you know it gets to a point with your enclosures where you know sometimes they're going to get too big for a safety tub and then you just kind of have to do things as safely as possible without the tub but for the most part that extra layer of protection it means a big you know it's a big deal because i've had many many times the tarantula kind of get away from me and it it stops in the tub it doesn't keep going and that's that's exactly what you want now you can use anything like like the stuff that I use, you know, like that blanket box, or you can get just a, a big Tupperware or, you know, even like a, a drawer out of a plastic tote or something like that will work. You know, just anything that will hold the enclosures and give you a little bit of room to work, basically. The next thing I want to talk about is personal safety equipment. Um, when you're working with tarantulas, mostly the new worlds, more so than the old worlds, but with the new world species, they have what's called urticating hairs. And these can be very irritating, especially if you get them in your eyes or your nose or something like that. You're, you're going to have a pretty rough day. Now, luckily, I've never had a reaction to them, even working with like the blondies and the sturries and stuff so far. I've been lucky, and I don't know, I just must be one of the lucky people that doesn't have a reaction. Either that or I just, <laughs> you know, I haven't gotten hair good enough for it to really do its job, but uh, you want to be pretty careful. So what I recommend is that you have gloves, which, you know, real cheap. You can buy a box of gloves at Menards for like 10 bucks, you know. Uh, long sleeve shirt so that you've got no exposed skin on your arms. And then, you know, safety glasses, you know. I'm not going to say you have to wear them. I'm not going to say you don't have to wear them. But if you're real sensitive and if you've got a tarantula that really likes to kick hairs, it's, it's not a bad idea to have something covering your eyes because you you really do not want to get those things in your eyes. I've seen pictures of people that have been haired in the eye, and it's it's 
you know, it's it's not a pretty picture. Their eyes are all bloodshot and red, and you know, you can tell that they're hating life. So you don't want that to happen. So it's best to take precautions so that it doesn't happen, just to keep yourself and your tarantula safe. The next thing that I'd like to talk about that a lot of people don't really consider is other pets. You want to make sure that you have your other pets, you know, whether it's a cat or a dog or any kind of free roaming animal that you would happen to have in your house in a different room, not able to get to you while you're doing this because if that tarantula does happen to get away and you've got a cat sitting on the other side of the room, as soon as that cat sees that tarantula running across the floor, its predatory instinct is going to kick in and it's just going to jump right on that tarantula. And, the cat might get hurt, the tarantula is definitely going to get hurt, and nobody's going to have a good day if that happens. And the same thing goes for a dog, too, you know, they're, the dog's going to be curious, it's going to go up to it, and it might get it just, you know, a snout full of hairs, it might actually try to pick up the tarantula and, and hurt the tarantula itself, and, you know, you just, you don't want that stuff to happen. So it's best to just make sure your pets are in a completely different area of the house, just for the safety of all of your pets and of yourself. The next thing I'd like to talk about is, if at all possible, you want to try to have a spotter or a partner, you know, just helping you out. An extra pair of eyes is always helpful. Um, you make sure, you know, you kind of talk about it a little bit beforehand, you know, you know, have a game plan ready to go so that you both know what's going on, who's doing what. And then make sure you're just communicating with each other during the process to, like, you know, watch the spider, you know, for a second, or can you see the spider, what's the spider doing, you know, can you hold this, can you hold the flashlight. Just an extra pair of eyes and an extra pair of hands makes everything go a whole lot easier. The next thing that you want to think about is just make sure that you have everything all together in the location that you've chosen, ready to go so that you don't have to, you know, pause in the middle of the, the rehouse and go, oh, where's the, <laughs> where's the lid to this catch cup? Or, you know, where did I put, you know, whatever it happens to be. You want to make sure you've got it all ready to go, including the new enclosure, so that you're not, you know, leaving the tarantula in the catch cup for an unnecessary long amount of time and, you know, causing more stress to the tarantula or yourself just trying to hustle to get stuff taken care of. Just kind of give yourself a little mental checklist and, okay, do I got my catch tub? Do I got this? Do I got my catch cup? Do I got my paintbrushes? All that stuff. Make sure you have them at hand within easy reach and ready to go when you start the rehousing process. Next thing you want to think about when you're rehousing is you know, try to try to get a, you know, a read on the tarantula's mood. Now, if, if it's a tarantula that you've had for quite a while, you know its temperament, you know what it's going to react for the most part. You, you can kind of, you know, judge how it's going to react when you're doing what you're doing and, you know, I mean, react accordingly. Um, if, if you're not sure about the tarantula, you can, you know, kind of test its temperament out. You know, did it freak out when you pick up the cage? Um, you can brush its back leg gently with a paintbrush if it doesn't, you know, kick a bunch of hairs at you or give you a threat pose or something like that. It's, it's probably in an okay mood and, you know, you're, you're pretty much okay to go ahead with the rehouse. And I'm not saying you can't rehouse a tarantula that's upset, but I think it goes a heck of a lot easier if the tarantula's in a, a decent, calm, receptive mood and, you know, it just makes things a lot less stressful for you and the animal itself. Uh, one thing that you really want to look for, too, is you really don't want to rehouse a tarantula that's a pre-molt. So if your tarantula is showing obvious signs of pre-molt, you know, just maybe wait until the molt, you know, actually probably about a week after the molt, to, to go ahead and do that just for the safety of the tarantula itself. Because you don't really want to stress a tarantula out when it's in pre-molt. It, it could cause it to molt a little bit prematurely. It could cause a, a number of other complications, you know, just you, you'd just rather be safe than sorry. Next thing I want to, you know, kind of go over that I don't think a lot of people really think about, but I mean, it, it does end up becoming obvious over time, but a lot of the new people won't think about is removing all the obstructions and stuff like that from the enclosure when you're getting ready to do the rehouse. Uh, the, the more stuff that you can get out of your way, the easier it's going to be to get that tarantula in a catch cup, you know, in a quick, efficient fashion and stress out the animal as little as possible. So you want to take out, you know, enclosure decorations, you know, make sure that the lid's up and off and out of the way. Uh, water dishes, any, you know, hides, any, anything that you can get out of there to make it easier for you to be able to get that tarantula in the catch cup, you want to do that. Now, I guess the last thing that I kind of want to go over as far as, you know, basic rehousing 101 type stuff is, 
expecting the unexpected. You know, they're they're in essence a wild animal, even though we have them in captivity. They're still, you know, they don't really even know they're in captivity. They're basically a wild animal, and they're going to re, you know, behave accordingly. And while you can kind of, you know, get to judge how a tarantula you've had for a while is going to act, you can kind of learn its mannerisms and and all that stuff like that. You really can't predict what's going to happen. So you, you really have to expect the unexpected and try to be prepared for anything that's going to happen, whether it's a bolt or the tarantula running up your arm or, you know, whatever kind of a scenario you can think of, you know, just try to have a little bit of a game plan in the back of your head for, okay, if this situation happens, how am I going to deal with it? You know, if the tarantula runs up my arm and ends up on my back, you know, what am I going to do? Is somebody going to be there? Am I going to be able to <laughs> safely get the tarantula off my back without getting bitten or hurting the tarantula? You know, you know any kind of a situation like that, you, you want to have some kind of a, you know, or try to have some kind of a game plan for and expect the unexpected, basically. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's crazy when you're working with animals because they, they really don't care about plans or, you know, schedules or itineraries or anything like that. They just sort of do their own thing and, you know, we have to be respectful of that and be aware of what can happen and, you know, plan and react accordingly. Okay, so for this portion of the video, I'm going to go over some different rehousing methods. I'm going to give you guys a few, you know, demonstrations. I'll go back and take some old clips and put them in here and give you a kind of a demonstration of a few of the different methods we, we use. And then uh, at the end of it, I'll kind of go over some other available methods that are out there that you guys can research that I don't normally use, but they're valid methods and you guys can check them out and, you know, find out if they're right for you. Because not every method is right for every keeper and, you know, not every keeper is going to want to do things the way I do it. Not every keeper is going to, you know, have any kind of idea what they're doing at all. So that's what the point of this video is, is just give you guys an idea of, you know, different ways of doing this. And then I'll show you, like I said, how we do a few different ways and we'll talk about some other stuff. So we'll move on to the next part of the video here. Okay, so the first method that I want to talk to you guys about is what I like to call the walkover method. And it's the simplest method, basically, that you can use to transfer a tarantula, although not necessarily the safest because it leaves you open to the tarantula running away and bolting on you. But uh, you want to use this generally on your spiderlings, which are, you know, a little bit easier to catch if they get away, or a, a tarantula that you're fairly certain is going to be nice and calm and docile and, you know, just walk right over for you. So we'll show you a little bit of a clip of that right here. We're going to do, uh, I think this was our Formictopus species Dominican Purple Blueberry. And I'll show you just, you know, how the walkover is supposed to go. And then we'll move on to the next method. I'm oh, sorry. Come on. Oh, you're going to be difficult, aren't you? There we go. Oh, there we go. All right. There you go. Oh, sorry. Oh, there's a little jump there. Huh? Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit on the, on the new house. Okay, so the next method that I want to show you guys is a catch cup method. It's pretty simple. It's just like it sounds. You get yourself a catch cup, get the tarantula in the cup, pop your lid on it, and move it over to the next enclosure. And then, you know, in reverse, take the lid off, get the tarantula in there safely, and you're good to go. Um, this usually works best for your fossorial and terrestrial species. The fossorials, obviously, you're going to have to kind of dig up a little bit first, most likely. Uh, I don't usually use this method for the arboreals since they tend to go up and they tend to be a little bit quicker and jumpier. Um, I'll show you guys how I do that one in the next segment here. So we'll give you a clip of the catch cup method. This is, I believe, our Therophosa blondi, Ozzy. He's a male, and this is just a quick transfer so that you guys can see how we do the catch cup method. Up looking at me. Okay, buddy. All right, there he 
is, folks, and it's a little tough to see through that plastic. But that's our two tube Blondie male, Ozzy. So we'll just get him right over here. We don't want to cause any more stress than we have to. All right, come on out of there, buddy. There we go. And that's that. Okay, and the last method that I'm going to demonstrate, but not the last one that I'm going to talk about, but the last one I'm going to demonstrate for you guys is the catch bottle method. And I use this for my real jumpy spiders, the arboreals, um, especially especially the arboreals because they tend to go up and trying to get them into a catch cup or walk them over just, you know, doesn't usually work too well. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this video. This is, uh, I believe this one's our s -Cal, and uh, she's a female and her name is Jack. You know, we thought she was a male, so we named her Jack, and then turned out to be a female, so we just left the name Jack. And I'll show you guys this clip so you can see how we do that, and then we'll move on to the next segment of the video. <laughs> Get that out of the way. Alright, so he's right doing in there. Okay. What I just... What do I see him? Yeah, I see him moving too. Come on up into the cup. Come on, Into the cup. Oh, All right, we got him in oh, the cup. Oh, he's big. He's huge. She. she. All right. So now we gotta get her to go up towards the top so we can get the cardboard underneath it. Perfect. Went exactly the way it's supposed to go. All right. So now, sure very carefully. Well, she's making her. Her pose there. Is that a good shot? It is, but it's clary. It's clearing. Is it clearing a little bit? Yeah, it's on the plastic, I think. Oh, but okay. you can see it. Okay. All right, well, it's a... Uh, beautiful, beautiful tarantula. I am just nervous right now. <laughs> All right, now we're going to go ahead and try to do this. Now we got a hole cut in this other piece of cardboard here on the bottom, so we'll slide off the solid one. Then hopefully, she'll just pop right, pop right, right through that hole and go down in there. Most okay. that's, that's the the game plan, anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. Go down the hole. Yeah. Oh, there oh. she is. Okay. Oh, and we just got to make sure she's okay, slide that one over the hole. And she's on that cardboard, I think. Slide that over the hole. Oh, she's over here now. There she is. She's goes. going down? Okay. Yep, she's good. So now we're just going to pop this lid on here. Not going to take any chances. Well, that went way better than I thought. All right. Easy peasy. That was not bad at all. Okay, so the next method that I want to talk about is moving the entire cork bark or hide from one enclosure to the other. Sometimes you get lucky, and especially on some of your arboreals or semi-arboreal species, they'll, inside the cork bark, they'll make their home. And it's not the safest method, but, you know, sometimes it works really well, especially when you don't want to try to dig the tarantula out of a cork tube or something like that. You can literally just pick up the entire cork tube and transfer that over to the new enclosure. It's pretty straightforward, although, like I said, it's not generally the safest most secure method but it, it is effective and it does work i've only done it a couple times and it worked out all right for me so that's something you might want to do a little research on and check out and try out for yourself if you think it's a technique that you want to use another option that you guys can consider especially for your fossorial species that are you know going to be burrowed way down in the enclosures is the flood method now i've seen this method used in many many youtube videos uh, I myself only tried it once on a H. Gaiagas communal that I had. I had three slings in there and, you know, they were burrowed down deep in there. And I tried to flood it out and basically I just ended up with a enclosure full of mud. And <laughs> after digging through there a little bit, you know, the spiders ended up just kind of popping up to the surface and taking off on me. And it didn't really work out that well, but I've seen it done successfully and done well in a lot of videos out there. So you guys can search that on the YouTube videos and go ahead and check it out and see if that's a method that you think might work for you. Like I said, personally, I don't recommend it, but it's a valid method. It's out there. A lot of people use it and it does seem to work for them. Just not something that I like to do.
Another method you might consider using that I just recently saw, Tarantula Cat just did a video on this not too long ago, and I believe she saw it on somebody else's video, but I don't off the top of my head know the name of that YouTuber. It's called the bag method, and it's pretty simple. You take a, a Ziploc baggie, a large Ziploc baggie, an elastic band, make a hole in the bag, stick a paintbrush in there, you get the tarantula in the bag, and then do it in reverse to get it into the new enclosure. I haven't tried this myself, but the video that Tarantula Cat made, she was successful. It looked like it went without a hassle. So I encourage you guys to go check out that video, look at that method, and see if it's something that you guys might want to use. All right, the last method that I want to talk about is also a real, real simple method. And this is more for like when you're getting spiderlings in the mail or you get a new tarantula in the mail, or if you're going from a, a real small enclosure that you can fit into the new enclosure, you just take the container that the spiderling came into, pop the lid off of it, put it in the new enclosure, let the spiderling come out on its own time. Same thing if it's a you know small enclosure going into a big one. You just stick the smaller enclosure right in there, take your lid off, and the spider's going to come out on its own time. And this is probably the least stressful method, I would imagine, as far as, you know, transferring a tarantula, because it's going to do it on its own, so it's not going to feel like it's being, you know, pushed or harassed or stressed out or anything like that. But it's only useful in just certain applications like I explained there. So, you know, I mean, check it out. There's some videos of people doing this on YouTube as well. I don't have any clips of this, but it seems to work pretty well, and I've done it a few times. I've never had a problem with it. It's one of the, one of the methods that I recommend. All right, guys, thanks for watching through to the end. I appreciate that. If you guys made it this far, congratulations. I really hope that uh, this information is helpful to you guys and it maybe helps alleviate a little bit of fear you guys might have of rehousing your tarantulas. Because like I said, it's, it's really nothing to be afraid of. You just got to be prepared and know what you're going to do, have a game plan, and you should be good to go. Um, like I said, if I miss anything in this video that you guys think I should have included, or if you guys have any tips for me that you use when you're doing your rehousings, please go ahead and leave those in the comments down below. I would love to hear them, and I always reply to every comment. Just want to take a second here to show off this snazzy new shirt that my wife got me for Valentine's Day. Really like this thing. Um, if you notice me wearing a couple different shirts in this video, it's because this video took... I think about four days or so to put together. I'm just doing the outro now as the last thing. I gotta film and then I gotta edit it all together. So, you know, the shaving level and the shirts and all that being changed is just because I couldn't get it all done in one day. So the continuity might not be exactly the same, but you know, it's just a YouTube video. So thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it. Um, if you like it, hit the like button. If you wanna subscribe, I encourage you to go ahead and subscribe and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.